Hi guys, today on Robot Hacking Tips, I'm going to show you how to control this motor and make a very simple mobile robot with very less components. If you're ready, let's get started. This motor is from WaveShare. You can check it out on this link. It's called DDSM115 and has been in the market for a while. It's a brushless in-wheel motor with a good specification for many robot applications. So please check it out for more detail. The motor itself looks really good. I can feel the quality made from the outside and the controller is built in inside. Just the cable comes out from the motor shaft. The motor is using RS485 communication with custom control packets. You can check on their wiki page to see some example. I made this DDSM115 Python library for 2 years ago and some people are still using that. For this time, I made a new ROS2 DDSM115 controller package which is based from my Python library so you can easily set up motor ID, check the online ID on the bus and a simple velocity control and everything controls via ROS2 topics. And also a quick startup node for 2 wheels mobile robot. Here is the connection diagram of all components. The green board which is a power and RS4S5 rail is just a custom power rail connector. You can see here I have made it like this, just so that all of the connectors on the board and all the pins are just parallel to each other. The Makita battery is connected at the end and there is USB to RS4S5 converter which I just need A, B and ground pins and connect USB side to the computer. So the motor on the rail should be setup ID in advance. Here I have set up two motors like this. There is a battery tray for Makita battery and now there is no connection on the RS-485 rail. The USB to RS-485 converter is already on the bus and it is connecting to my PC USB port. If we list dev TTY devices, then you will see a dev TTY USB 0. First, we need to set up an ID to each motor, so we have to connect one motor on the rail at a time, then plug on the battery. On first terminal, we run ROS2 run DDSM115 controller, set up motor ID, then if USB device is correct, you will need to put a number ID to this motor. I just set this as 1 and enter. After that, just restart by unplugging the battery once, then plug it back. Then you can use check motor ID node to see available motor on the rail and it returns as ID 1. Unplug the first motor and battery. Repeat the same step for the second motor, but this time we set ID as 2 and also confirm that the ID is set up correctly. This time, we plug two motors in the same time and power on and check motor ID again. You will see that there are ID 1 and 2 on the rail as we want. Next, we run velocity control node. It will check all the available motors on the rail and is publishing the feedback of RPM, current, temperature and error and subscribe on the RPM and brake commands. Then I will echo all of the feedback on those four terminals. So you could see it's a list of two elements because we have two motors for now. And we can plot out the RPM feedback of two motors. It's free to turn because no break at this moment and the output values are continuously smooth. Then if we send RPM command, for example, 20 RPM on first motor, you could see it's rotating with a constant speed and faster like 60 and minus 80 rpm then it's spinning as correct direction and much faster like 100 and minus 150 rpm but if we set brake command as true then it will lock the shaft in place we cannot turn the wheel and release the brake by setting as fault then it's free to turn again. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is not only a PCB manufacturer, but they are also specialized in CNC machining. No matter how complicated the part is, with their high experiences, you will get the parts as you expected. Also, 3D printing with various of filaments from high precision lacing, a complicated structure, a TPU flexible material, 
a production grade durable material like ASA or even titanium which is tough and lightweight and some of sheet metal work for enclosure or a cover even you only need bending part or welding you can choose what is right for you if you're looking for a place for a rapid prototype even a single piece or a bulk please try check on PCB way from now to end of this year 2025 there's a big Christmas sale campaign and you could get a free coupon code even just an order from $30 so, why don't you try PCB Way for your next project? Next, we're going to make the two wheels robot, and these are just the parts that we need. I will use this recycled Takashi box as a robot body frame, and as you can see, there's already some holes for mistakenly drill, but I think we can still use it. And here are the complete assemble of all parts. There's Makita battery holder at the back, then we can plug battery from the outside. And I just put all the components inside the box. The Wi Fi router is just an option, so I don't want to use Raspberry Pi Wi Fi. And the camera is also an option. The wheel motor is attached to the box with 3D printed part for both sides, and also a caster wheel with some spacer to level the body. And this is a very simple robot with a very less components. On robot terminal, we just start ROS2 run, the DSM115 controller, velocity control, and on second terminal, we run ROS2 run, the DSM115 controller, two wheels robot, with the parameters of pubtf as true, so it will publish a tf of odom to base link. On my PC terminal, I run ROS2 run, joy, and joy node to get data from gamepad so I can move the robot from the analog sticks. Another terminal on my PC, I just run RVS2 with wheel odom config. Then we can move the robot from gamepad and the odometry is showing correctly. In the future, we can apply robot localization, EKF, to get a better odometry with IMU Fusion. Moreover, if you have followed my video, I have shown how to set up a WebRTC to control robot from web browser. And here I just use the same code from that video and we can move the robot from joystick on the screen. And the video streaming is also looking good. The control from web browser is also responsive. So I think this very simple setup robot would be good for surveying in a narrow area like a pipeline or small tunnel or you can even do a slam navigation too for serious autonomous driving. And that is today robot hacking tips. If you like this kind of video or found something helpful, please don't forget to press like and share buttons and press on subscribe so you won't miss what robot hacking tips next time. Thank you for watching and see you again.